This is a new project that we're starting, and we're working with the city of Granbury to make this uh, a reality. Uh, on channel 27, if you have cable, this is the way we can get information out about different things. But we're going to be talking about veterans, uh, veterans and their lives and the history of, of those veterans. Uh, and if you are a U.S. veteran and you've not told your story, we want you to come to the museum and to uh, do, a, do a production on your life and your times and the times in which you were in the military. Because uh, I have a friend that uh, was the uh, director of the Vietnam Center at Lubbock, Texas, at Texas Tech University. He commented one time, he said, the way to know what the true history of a nation is, is to have the people who lived that, that time and those, uh, that history to tell it. So what we're doing is we're trying to get the veterans to come in and to do a recording of their lives and what happened in their in that time that they were in the military. So if you're a veteran and you've not done that, we would encourage you to do this because it's the way to preserve the history not only of your life but the history of our country. And we're very interested in that. Today we're going to take a little we're a little approach, different approach. Uh, we with me is Burton Burks. Uh, junior, and uh, he has been a Lions, uh, Granbury Lions Club member since 1964. 64. So we were just talking, and it's 48 years he's been in the Lions Club. Uh, this year, this month, sometime, hopefully, we're going to be having a Lions Club pancake supper, and that is open to everyone. We want you to come and to to uh, uh, have a good pancake supper with sausage and this kind of stuff. And this is the way the Lions uh, Club has a, this is their fundraiser for the year, one of their fundraisers for the year. And so we want you to, to uh, be uh, aware of that and to take advantage of it. When we get the correct date uh, on it, well, we'll let you know. Today, we're going to tell you a little bit about, or Burton's gonna tell you a little bit about uh, this video that we're gonna be seeing. And we recorded it here a while back uh, Burton, uh, when he recorded this, he he did not he was not aware that he was to receive the Melvin Jones Award. That's for service above and beyond a lot of things. Uh, so we kind of tricked Burton into doing this. So we're going to be TVing that that interview with you for you to uh, to become aware of some of the things the Lions Club uh, does. So. Burton, do you have anything you would like to say about this? Well, uh, I was kind of surprised when I received this Melvin Jones Award. I had no idea that, uh, you know, I would uh, receive such an award, but I was proud of it. And uh, a lot of things happened uh, in the Lions Club that I'm proud of. And a uh, number of, of projects that the Lions Club supports. Uh, the high glasses, the uh, uh, train, the dog, eye, eye training dog, uh, and numerous other things. The camps course. down at Fredericksburg. The what? The camps. Yes, the camp down at uh, Kerrville. Kerrville, not Fredericksburg. Kerrville. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for handicapped youngsters, and uh, that's a tremendous program that they have down there, and every year. Uh, they have a work day down there and lines uh, are able to go down there and, and help get the camp in order for, right. the, yeah. for the kids. And they said this year they had more, more volunteers down there than they've ever had before. Yes. Which is a, which is a real good thing. So uh, they, they take uh, these, these young folks down there if they have diabetes or whatever their problem is, they have a week for them and it's no cost to them. Uh, we just, we just, the Lions just gets them down there, and so this is a big effort by a lot of people. So this is what the monies go that the Lions Club here in Grand Beer makes. Uh, they, they buy glasses for school children that, that, uh, that their parents can't afford it. So we, we, we like to support the Lions Club, and, and we, we look forward. So when we, when we find out about the pancake supper, we'll be back with everyone. But, uh. Today, what you'll be viewing will be the interview that we did with Burton and uh, uh, about the Lions Club, about his 48 years in the, in the 
as a member of the Granbury Lions Club. So with that, we're going to uh, say thanks, and we want to thank the city of Granbury for uh, working with us to get this on Channel 27 because the, the museum, the U.S. Veterans Museum, is a, is a world of history about what some of our guys and gals did in all of the wars in the, in this, in the history of the United States of America. And uh, uh, it, it tells the story of what they gave. Some gave all of their life, all that they had, which was their lives, and some just gave a lot. Uh, but once you, once you defend your country, that means you're a part of it. So we're proud of this. We're proud of the Veterans Museum. We're proud that the city of Granbury is allowing us to put this on Channel 27. So with that, we're going to uh, say see you on down the road, and we'll, we'll, we'll be talking to you. And so remind you that if you do not have a, uh, a story about your service, uh, well, we, want to, we would encourage you to come and to do that. So with that, we'll see you later. Thanks a lot. Hi, my name is J.C. Campbell, and we're here today to do an interview about Lions Club. The Lions is going to be 50 years old this coming March. With me, next to me, is Burton Burks, Jr., and we'll have a line uh, of James Royce. And uh, we're going to be interviewing Lion Burton about uh, some of the things that happened in his tenure here in Granbury. He's about 48 years into this uh, 50 years that we've got, and so he's uh, the, there's only two members that, that are still alive on our charter. Uh, and uh, one's in Alaska, and the other one was just a short-time member as he was working for the railroad company, and he couldn't make all the meetings. And Glenn Hodges is his name. He still lives in Granbury. But uh, uh, we're, we want to document uh, the history of the Granbury Lions Club, and they were chartered on March the 6th, 1961. And uh, so this is the reason we want to do this, because I've been told in the past that if you want to get the history right, you need to talk to those who lived it to tell you what happened. And that's what we're trying to do. Barton has been in the Lions Club here in Granbury for a long, long time. And so we're going to be asking him some questions and getting his remembrances about what happened in the early days of Lions Club starting in 1961. Before we do, though, I want to give a special thanks. The Lions Club of Granbury would like to thank Tom Green and the U.S. Veterans Museum for videoing this uh, this uh, inter uh, interview because uh, it's, as I said a while ago, it's part of the history of Granbury and that's what we're trying to preserve is the history of Granbury and Lions Club is a very special part of that history and you will learn more. If you're not familiar about the Lions Club in Granbury, you'll be learning a little bit more about that. So we want to we want to go ahead and start. Uh, behind me you'll see the, uh, you'll see the, the original charter and it's got names of 27 guys and as I said uh, there are a lot of them that are local businessmen that started started this thing, and so there's only two that's still alive. Uh, today, uh, James Royce uh, and I are interviewing Lion uh, Burks uh, about uh, his t uh, time here in Granbury. Now, Lion, uh, Lion Burks, uh, if you would, uh, why, uh, what, what, when did you move to Granbury? I moved to Granbury in 1955, January of 1955, after serving four years in the United States Air Force, um, honorably discharged, and uh, in January of 55, we moved to Granbury to the farm. Okay. Now, when did you become associated with the Lions Club? Uh, I became a Lion in 1964. Uh, J.T. Manus was my sponsor, and uh, he had a, a he, he belonged or he operated a locker plant in Granbury. And uh, when my wife would go in there and, and put a, something in or take something out, uh, J.T. would always jump her about me joining the Lions Club. So finally I did, and uh, I certainly don't regret that, but... Uh, I, I do regret not being a charter member. Yeah. Well, well, you were not here whenever it was formed, though. Yes. Were you? Oh, you were yeah. here then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, for those of you that are not familiar with locker plants, a locker plant is before uh, deep freezes. So if you had a freezer 
uh, that was very unusual in that time. But that's what we had a we had a place down right off where the uh, right off of the square, or the southeast corner of the square that was uh, behind the church. Yeah, it was behind where the Methodist church was. But uh, it was you could go down, you could have a pig or a, a cow or something killed, and they would store it there for you. So. When you needed it, you went down, and so that's what you were talking about. So you did it in self-defense of yourself, then. You joined the Lions Club to, to keep him off your case. And that's right. right. Okay. Now tell us a little bit about your friend, uh, your your uh, family. Well, we had two children at the time. But you and who? Uh, Francis. Okay. My uh, wife, yeah. Francis. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the, we had a, a daughter, Brenda, and a son, Jim. And... Uh, they later, or Jim did, become a lion, and we have a great, uh, not a great, a great, a grandson who's just recently joined the Lions Club in uh, Grosbeck. Okay. And uh, so uh, the Lions Club has, has been a, uh, an important part of my life and in the life of the family. Uh, we, we, like I say, started in, in 1964, and and uh, uh, have been uh, a member. I missed the last couple of years because of health reasons, but uh, nevertheless, it's it's been a, an important part of the life. Yeah. And, and you know, the motto of the Lions Club is "We Serve," and uh, certainly uh, the the Granberry chapter of the the Lions Club is has done a lot of service, and, and we'll get to more of that in a little bit. Tell a little bit now about Jim, uh, about Jim. Now he uh, he. Uh, he, he was my oldest son's sponsor, John Campbell's oldest. He was his sponsor whenever he joined the club. But John had to opt out after a few years because he was working a lot of overseas and, and he couldn't make all of the, the meetings. But but uh, And I think that Jim sponsored Sylvia whenever she joined the club. So, Jim, you're, you're the Burton, uh, Burke's uh, uh, family has had a lot to do with the, with the perpetuation, if you would, of the Lions Club here in Granbury. Uh, is there anything else now? Uh, is your granddaughter? She hasn't joined yet, has she? No. Well, you need to work on her, right? She, <laughs> she is uh, the, the director director yeah. of the senior center, and yeah. uh, of course, the uh, Lions Club been fortunate to have pancake supper at yeah. the center. Yeah. We're going to talk more about pancake supper in just a minute, but. Uh, tell us a tell us a little bit about your who sponsored you. You you were talking about that. J T. Minus. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, like I say, J T. was a, a charter member, and uh, he he kept uh, kept after me to to become a member, and I, I finally consented. But that's yeah. how, how it happened. Very good. Well, now you live north of town. Uh, what what's that area called out there? Well, it's uh, been uh, uh, developed into a development, Abe's Landing. Uh, they're in the process of building several new homes out there. And of course, we farmed that uh, property from 1955 until we sold the property in, in uh, 2006. And it, it, the, the property had been in the family uh, since the 1860s, and uh, my great grandfather uh, Abe Nutt ran a ferry across the the river at that time, and uh, it was uh, a way that they traveled from the north uh, over to Thorpe Springs, and uh, I think uh, the, the story is that. One time he was ferrying some cattle or something across, and they they got a little uh, rowdy, and they pushed him off in the in the, river. the river, and he took pneumonia as a result. And uh, later, at the ripe old age of 41, he passed away. At the ripe old age. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I can understand that. There weren't too many bridges in in Hood County at that time. No, that's correct. So you got you got the ferry working to, to take care of that. And there wasn't any road from Grand said from the courthouse to uh, La Pan either. I don't know not about that. Well not that we know of that had a bridge that you could cross. Yes, yes. Yeah. We uh, uh, 
I know that the, the first bridge that was built across uh, was in the early 1900s. And about 1909, they had a flood and it washed, washed out. So they've had uh, numerous bridges uh, built out there at that same location. And, and uh, the, they're using one that was built recently. Yeah. Well, that, the, the swinging bridge, uh, at Tin Top up there, that, that was, when do you have any idea about that? Are you talking about bridges? No, I, I have no knowledge of the, uh, I just know I, I went over it yeah. times too. But did, the, did, the, did the timbers roll as you rolled over Yeah, yeah it kind of did. It did, it did, it was, it it was, was scary. Kind of, yeah, it was spooky. It was scary, <laughs> it was scary. Uh, won't you tell us a little bit about, uh, well, that's, that's James is gonna be doing that, but is there anything else you wanna say about Abe's Landing out there. That's, that's like you said, it's been in your family since uh, 1860 or somewhere like that. Uh, well, the rock that was, uh, the uh, anchor was uh, attached to, was gonna be uh, uh, covered up by the lake. And uh, so we decided we needed to do something about that and broke off a big piece of it and and carried it up to our home. And it was there it's, with that, uh, yeah. Peg in the in the rock. Really? That, that, they, that, that anchored the, the they, rope that right. went across the they, river. They, they went across the of the river uh, to a cottonwood tree. Mm -hmm. They tied it to a cottonwood tree over there. But uh, that's kind of uh, what happened to the the position of the uh, of the the rock or in the the landing that we decided it. Uh, that's what we wanted to call it. Edge yeah, landing. Edge landing. That's, that's a good way to, to to have history preserved is uh, naming uh, an area out there. For well, it was it really Abel Nutt. He was a, one of the four brothers of the Nutt family. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, think that, I think that's a good thing. But you know, uh, Jim was always very proud of, and he often spoke about Abe's Landing, and most of us had no idea what it was. And so I just, just now found out about the Abe, Abel Nutt yeah. You know, I, I guess I've known about, known about Abel Nutt, but I never knew that was the reason that the night that the uh, the that area was named for that. Yes. But um, anyway, well, anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay, before we go any further, I just thought of something. Jim, before Jim passed away, he had this this uh, this uh, chuck wagon. Yeah. And he and and his wife used to meet on the square, and they would have these. Uh, they would cook things down there on the square for different for different occasions, but I think he really loved to cook uh, biscuits, and uh, they'd have preserves or whatever to go with it. And it was something that he gave back to the community. Uh, and after he passed away, well, uh, the Lions Club bought bought the uh, the chuck wagon and used it for kept it for three or four years or so, and and since then. My son and Pogie and Dan Ames have bought the chuck wagon, and they use it to, to continue the cooking. So, in a way, Jim's still with us when we take the chuck wagon out because we always talk about how Jim used that chuck wagon to to help further the... It wasn't just a Lions Club, but it was uh, the, the we, we serve thing. It, it kind of perpetuated that, that idea because Jim did that. Well, Jim really was... Uh enthusiastic about the uh, chuck wagon and uh, it was uh, it was a shame that he uh, of course is no longer with us yep. and, and uh, he, he would have liked to have continued yep. that I'm sure yeah yep. well uh, anyway I think I've come to the end of my my part of this right now but so I'm going to let Lion James take it and he's got some questions that he's gonna grill you on if you don't mind Yes, Lion Burton, I, I know <clears throat> in the history of Lions Club, and, and uh, I joined Lions Club in 1983 in, in Cedar Hill, Texas, and in uh, early years of, of our meetings, some strange things happened in our club. And, uh, can you remember some of the happenings in the, in the first meetings of the club here in Granbury? Yes, we, we met at one time at what was uh, on uh, Pearl Street was uh, Mildred's. It was a restaurant there that had a meeting room behind, and uh, the problems we had uh, with our meetings sometimes were uh, they got to throwing paper wads, and uh, this is grown men now. Yeah, okay. and that that kind of got out of hand, so they they 
it made them quit throwing paper wads, but I do remember one other instance where uh, they were trying to create some interest, I suppose, in the Lions Club, and they cut somebody's tie off. But uh, that was not a, a very uh, a good thing to do because I think after that happened, we lost some members. <laughs> <laughs> or at least we didn't wear ties. That's right. <laughs> uh, did the tail twister have a hard time keeping the members in, in line during that early years? Well, I, I, yes, I would, I would say that he did. I can't even remember who the tail twister was, but yeah, it was, uh, it was difficult to, because, you know, there was a lot of excitement about it, and, and we, uh, we enjoyed meeting with the Lions. Yeah. I remember I was first in in Cedar Hill, and the tail twister was the police chief. And I was fined for some probably ridiculous reason that I didn't really do, you know, like we lions are fine now. We don't say Lion Burton or Lion JC. And um, our tail twister really jumps us about that. And anyway, the, the tail twister came up behind me and put a headlock on me. <laughs> and so I had to pay my fine. I believe it was 10 cents. But I paid it quickly and I was careful what I said, from, you know. Um, some of my questions uh, I've written down uh, is, I know you held the office of president of Redbury Lions Club, and uh, was that just one time? Or? No, I, I was president two different times, 1977-78 uh, and 1988 and 89. Okay. And did you hold other offices in the club? Well, yes, I've been, uh, uh, I hadn't been a tail twister, thank goodness, but uh, I've been the director, yes. Were you ever treasurer of the club? Or? No, I don't recall that I was ever treasurer or secretary, no. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to come down now to some questions about our, our pancake grill. We have a diagram here of it and an article that was in the paper some years ago. We don't have a date on this article. But when, when did you first see the grill? Well, uh, actually, we... we were using uh, grills, electric grills, uh, and uh, the first pancake uh, supper that I can recall right after I joined was in the, uh, well, what's the uh, board meeting room now over in the, in the old uh, section of the schools. And uh, then we later moved to the new elementary school that was built, uh, uh, two-story on Jones Street, on on Jones Street. Jones Street right. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we had to, in order to use the grills uh, there, and we, we borrowed grills from Texas Electric in Weatherford. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they had to always call in a, an electrician to wire up the grills because they required more, more power than, than uh, just an ordinary plug-in. So uh, after we did that, uh, we found out that the Alito FFA area, uh, had a, a grill that they used for a pancake supper. And from that uh, uh, beginning, uh, we had the idea that, that w that's what we needed. So uh, Bill Flint was uh, uh, a very fine uh, machine man, and we asked Bill if he couldn't build us a, a pancake cooker similar to the one in, in a, a, that was it with Alito, but uh, he, he went a little better than the one in Alito. Uh, it did not revolve, I don't think, the one there, but uh, he built it where he used a bicycle sprocket and, and gears to cause the pancake uh, cooker to, to turn. And you could, uh, I think it took about a minute or so for the pancakes to come around. And uh, after they were uh, done, ready to pick up, well, of course, they put more more batter on the, on the grill or on the part that we were using for uh, cooking the pancakes. But uh, no, it was a, uh, it was something that Bill Flint did for us that we were really grateful for. Do you remember what year it was that he built that? 
Well, we've tried and tried and tried to come up with a year, and and uh, it, it's been difficult. I don't know why we didn't put down the year, but uh, anyhow, I, I'm going to say sometime in the early 70s. James, if I might interject something here, uh, I was on the city council from 71 to 92, and we hired uh, Bill Flint was working at Lockheed, and we hired him to be the city manager here at Granbury. And it was after that, so I think it was about 73 or 74 that 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 he did this work, and he did it in his shop. Yeah. Uh, he he was a he was a Volkswagen nut. I mean, yeah. he loved Volkswagens, yeah. and uh, he worked on them all the time. And he had a shop back over here where there's a baseball field now, and uh, he uh, he built that thing then. But it was. He was very ingenious about doing things and working with his hands, but I believe it was about 73, somewhere along in there, yeah. that he did yeah. that. And, and it still works on the same sprocket yeah. and the same little motor, right. and yeah. it still makes a turn in about a minute, because we've timed it. Yeah. And yeah. usually it takes two turns, and we turn them over, and two turns, and they're done. Yeah. When, whenever, well, I don't know if it's taking two turns, but it's just, it goes around, if you get it really, really cooking you can you can get them down pretty quick and yeah. you can feed a lot of people now that depends quick. on the, the heat and that's right a lot of times the you first got more heat we right. put on there we didn't let, let it get hot enough so yeah yeah well, uh, the, there was a, a gas heater under that that cooker part and uh, you could adjust the, the heat yes. by adjusting the amount of gas that, that went to the, the heater I think aren't those aren't those water heater burners that yes. underneath it I think right. we've got four underneath. Yeah, three or yeah, four. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's where you get your that's where it heats up. What is it about a three eighths inch aluminum plate or a half Something inch like aluminum that. plate? Yeah. 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 You know the diagram or the plan say it was a half, half inch, inch yeah. and uh, <laughs> then it's uh, four foot across. Yeah. So cook a lot of pancakes. Yeah. And I know he also uh, in the article that we have it, it said that he sent plans to Canada and he also made a cooker for a, a Byron. Georgia Lions Club, and then you were saying one went up to Wyoming. Wyoming, I believe that's correct. Uh, actually, uh, the reason that that, uh, that all came about is because the Lions International magazine had a picture of of the Lions Club and the pancake cooker, and and when it went to all the clubs, then that uh, created an interest in uh, their obtaining one. So that's why the, the other cookers were, were made. Yeah. yeah I, know, I know the Lions Club in Lubbock feeds quite a few people every year. And they, they have a record in the record book about that, but they don't use a round grill. Mm -hmm. They use some square grills. Yeah. So you wonder why they don't get smart and <laughs> build them a round grill. Uh, I know that right now the, the Godly Club is in process of building a grill, and they ask us for the plans, and we set those we sent those to them so that they could also uh, have a grill. Um, how many how many people do you think that, that the Lions Club has fed pancakes to over the years? Oh my goodness, that's uh, it, it's several. Usually, uh, we would feed in excess of 400 people at a, at a pancake supper, uh, and and uh, when you add that up over the times that we. We had the cooker well, it amounts to a lot of people. Yes. It's not just once a year. We, we cook for the senior citizens for their fundraiser now and also for the Hood County uh, Junior 4-H <coughs> Club, right. the Livestock Club. And uh, we cook for the Relay for Life. And I remember last year when yeah. we cooked for ourselves, we cooked, uh, it was over 100 pounds of mix. And uh, where, did, where did we get the mix from? Well, at the beginning, we got it from a, a milling company in Denton. Uh, I can't recall. Morrison Mills. Uh, one, Morrison. Morrison is correct. And uh, we would go up and, and purchase uh, whatever we needed. In fact, they made us a special deal on uh, the, the price, and so that helped a lot. <coughs> yeah, I know they, they are no longer there, but they... Uh, what I found out a couple of years ago when we could not get the mix, mix with yeah. them anymore that they sold to uh, a company down in Durin, Texas now. So that's that's where the, 
place is, and it's the Pioneer. I see. Thing, so it's supposed to be the same. Um, now, your son, I was told, was uh, the one who mixed the batter. He helped to, yes. I think uh, Walter Baldry helped, uh, and I think Sylvia even got in on some of that. So and there were several that, uh, that were re uh, responsible for mixing uh, the batter, yes. You had to be trained to do that, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and when I first transferred to the club here uh, in about 2003 and went to the first pancake supper, uh, you guys wouldn't let me flip pancakes. <laughs> and, and, There's and a pecking was, order there. Yeah. yeah. And so I had to wait. I, but I was the official pancake cooker in Cedar Hill, and that didn't seem to impress you guys at all. <laughs> but a lot of Lions clubs do that, and that's a good fundraiser, and that's been great for us. And this is going to be the 10th year for the Jim Burke Memorial Pancake Supper coming up on March uh, 19th, uh, the same day as General Granberry Day. And uh, that will be out at the Senior Center or at Reunion Grounds, whichever <laughs> happens because of the water leak. Water damage, the yeah. yeah. Um, also, the, the pancake cooker is used to cook pancakes for Relay for Life. And we've, we've used that outside at the, at the football field at the junior high school. And last year, a storm came in and, and it was canceled, but then they asked us to cook later and we cooked out at the Union Grounds. And I don't know if you know this or not, but we cooked pink pancakes. <laughs> so so we're, we're very accommodating to our, our clientele that we do that for. And I don't know, we used, uh, we fed 60 people and we used about 20 pounds of mix for that. And uh, we, we lions enjoy doing the pancake cook. We have a lot of fun. When was the barn built? In 2001. It was when it was finished? I think so, yeah. Okay. We may have started in uh, right at the end of the uh, 19, 19, yeah, 1999 or 2000, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Where was the <coughs> pancake cooker stored before then? Well, it was stored in several places. Uh, uh, Willie Macy's place. Mm -hmm. uh, it was stored, I think, at uh, Lefty Lancaster's service station that used to be across from Joe's uh, restaurant now. There was a service station there, and we kept our flags and the cooker there. And then we kept the cooker and, and the flags out at, at our, our place in the morning out there. So it's, it's traveled around quite a bit. And our barn now is, is really neat because we keep our, our flags for the flag route and, and our cooker and uh, trailer trailer for the, for the parade. And uh, that we, we participate in all the parades in, in Hood County. And uh, uh, we had a trailer before the one we have now. And, and then uh, after I came here, the, uh, the club bought another trailer and we began to participate in the parades again in, in earnest. Um, when did the Lions Club take over the, the flag route? Well, uh, I, I really can't put a date on it, but the JCs, uh, when their organization uh, demised or ceased to be, uh, they offered the, the uh, flag uh, project to the, to the Lions Club, and we thought that was a good deal, so we, we took them up on it. Now, did, did the Lions Club pay the JCs anything for that? To my knowledge, they didn't. Because yeah. that's one of our major fundraisers yeah, now. Exactly. And do you remember how many flags they were putting out when you first took the route? No, it was uh, probably less than 200. Okay. And now we put out uh, between seven and 800 and have 10 routes. Right. So it's really, it's really grown, and that's good because we use the proceeds from that to for all of our projects here in Hood County and, and helping the, the young people with uh, in the Hood County Public School with eyeglasses. Uh, I think last year we, Alain Sylvia Campbell was telling me we spent a little over $6,000 and uh, we pay for the exam and the glasses. Uh, we give scholarships to graduating seniors 
And um, so we use the money just, just right here in, in Hood County. And I'll get into that a little uh, bit more. Do you remember uh, the, the cost of eyeglass program in the past and how many that we gave out before, say, 1990? No. Uh, it wasn't near what we're doing now, but uh, we had it in our budget to allocate so much money for that. And uh, I, I, I wouldn't have any idea how many, how many that we helped. But now that was something the club did from the time you joined, is that right? Oh yeah, well, they they didn't start it until years after I joined, but uh, it was a, a, a project that uh, was needed uh, by the kiddos in school. They, uh, the nurses in the schools screened the, the kids if the, to see if they needed the, the, the glasses, and yeah, it was... Uh, it was a good thing for us to do. Yeah. That's part of our international objective is to help with sight. And, and the Lions Club was started in about 1917. And then when they, at one of the early meetings, Helen Keller spoke and she challenged the Lions Club to become the Knights of the Blind. And we have been ever since. And, and uh, I know in the Cedar Hill Club and, and before I was in Lions uh, in other parts uh, of Texas, that was one of the main objectives of a child couldn't see or needed glasses, uh, the Lions Club would, would help them some way get glasses and they would help adults at, at times when when they needed uh, surgeries uh, for cataract and for other surgeries. Uh, you could call them and if they didn't have the money, they would do something to raise the money. I don't know if the tail twister did that, or, but the Lions have always been conscious about that and worldwide we, we've spent a lot of money to to stop blindness in areas, uh, the trachoma and the river blindness, and have just about wiped that out. And, and the Granberry Lions Club has been very involved with the with the club in Mexico yes. until they've had all of the the bad stuff happening down there. So, yeah, several <clears> years ago, uh, I went with my church, and you remember this, and we helped over 480 people with glasses in one little small community, and. Uh, we collect used eyeglasses, and uh, we get turn in quite a few every year. And they're sent to Midland, Texas, and, and the pe people there, Lions, and some students, they read the prescriptions, and then they write it on bags and box them up in boxes of 50, and that's what we used in Mexico. And uh, when we would examine the eyes, and Dr. Chris Cheney was there with us and know what it was, and we'd get one that would match as close as we could and the amazing thing is, it was quite an experience for me because when you put the eyeglasses on the people and they could see, a big smile comes on their face. And for some of them, that was the first time they could really see clearly. And uh, it's just a matter of getting the glasses there. And, and now, in that same Lions Club, they have uh, been funded from International with a, uh, what we call a grinder, and lenses for children, and they go into the villages and they examine the children's eyes, go back to their clinic in Chihuahua, and they make brand new pair of glasses for the kids and take them back out to them. So that's something that, that we help with even here from Granbury. Now we give scholarships to graduating seniors uh, in Hood County. We include all the schools, Granbury, LaPan, and Toler. Uh, do you remember some of the students that we've given scholarships to in the past? Well, we've tried to uh, instill in the students to correspond with us and tell us how they how they did or, or you know whether they graduated or not. But uh, it it's been a, a program that uh, we're, we're proud of. And uh, uh, no, I can't come up with any any name specifically, but it's. Uh, we ought to come up with one name. <laughs> Your grandson. Yeah, our, our, my, our grandson. Uh, he got a scholarship and uh, went on uh, to, to college at, uh, at Sherman. Um, and then later went to uh, Washington, D.C. and graduated from a law school up there. Uh, came back to Texas and passed his bar. And now he's a... Uh, in the uh, uh, district attorney 
Attorney's Office in, in, uh, in uh, Grossenbeck. Grossenbeck. But he came to the club since I've been a member and thanked us. Yes. And that's something that doesn't happen very often. And, and I really appreciate it. And it's, that's a fine young man to keep the, the Burke's tradition and line is of going. And didn't you sign his membership application? I uh, probably did, but uh, just recently he had joined the Lions Club at, at, uh, at the Grossenbeck. Grossenbeck, yes. Yeah. And that, that's okay. You can sign somebody's application that yes. doesn't live here. Yeah. You know. What are some of the current programs that we do that you like best? All the, <coughs> uh, the one I like best. <coughs> is the pancake supper project <coughs> and also the flag. Uh, those two are uh, important so far as monetary value to the to the club so that we can that we can fund some of these things that we're doing like the eyeglasses and uh, help for uh, the needy. But uh, yeah there uh, it's uh, it's something that we we like to do. In some of our projects now, uh, Burton, and I know you know about these because I believe you were the one that made the motion to start the Perfect Attendance the program, which uh, I introduced to the club uh, when I joined, and, and we gave the students who have, and still do, who have perfect attendance each six weeks, they got a special prize. And at first we started, we had to give them something with nutritional values, so we gave them, you know, milk chocolate, M&M's, and um, uh, Snickers bar with peanuts because that, that has food nutrition because the school system said we couldn't give them a hard candy. But now we give them a coupon to go to CC's Pizza and, and get free pizza. And uh, the six weeks that ended, uh, December the 17th, we gave out 1,764 perfect attendance coupons. And this six weeks that just ended, last Friday, uh, it's over 1,200. And we carry that beyond just the six weeks because we give them a perfect attendance award at the end of the school year. They've had perfect attendance all years, no tardies. We give them a gold dollar. And last year we gave out 165 gold dollars and the year before it was 149. And uh, the children could get a gold dollar from grandpa or grandma or, or mom or dad, but they want the one that comes from the Lions Club. And uh, I know that many of them will keep that, and they're encouraged by that. And it's, it's a, uh, that program has really worked for us. Uh, well, I, I think the, the objective is to try to encourage the kids to go to school. Yes. And uh, if, they, if they do have a perfect attendance, they're recognized. And, and the teachers like that because they have te students who are there every day and they don't have to back up and repeat. Yes. And, and they all have been very appreciative of the Lions Club for that. Uh, one of the things we do too is we help <coughs> Habitat for mm -hmm. Humanity every year. And I don't know exactly how long we've been doing that, but we're one of their called Century Club members and, and I know that we're giving them about $500 a year when they start building homes uh, here in Hood County and they built nearly 50 here just in Hood County. So that's one of the things some of our members uh, take part in. Uh, also we do eye, eye clinics for adults as well as children but we do an eye clinic out at Rancho Brazos and have for the last several years and help adults uh, with eyeglasses. And then several years ago, we got this little guy, Leo, and he was rescued from a, like a Salvation Army store, a Goodwill store, and he's been all over the world. He's been to Iraq, he went with me to Mexico, and he's been in most of our homes and gone on vacations with us and just had a, had a great time, went deep sea diving, and uh, just, just, just been a lot of different places. And notice he's, he's got still his, And notice he's got his camo britches on. Yep. And he's got, I guess that's from Iraq, but he's got his Lions Club vest mm -hmm. on, and so he's he's been he's been traveling. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, it always attracts children. And you know he was kidnapped one time. <laughs> and uh, man, we had to pay a ransom. 
to, and that was by selling a certain amount of pancake tickets so that we could rescue him. And we even got pictures, and he he was blindfolded so that he wouldn't know where he was. So we've had a lot of fun with, with our our little mascot, Leo. We also have another mascot that we use, and, and that's Lion Simba. And Lion Simba goes to the uh, schools and helps to present the Perfect Attendance Awards and the Gold Dollars, and also is in our parades. He, he participates in all the parades here in, in Granbury except the Veterans Day Parade, and, and we want to honor just the veterans that day and not distract from them. But Simba is very popular with the with the uh, young people here in Hood County, and he's also participated in parades and other uh, Lions clubs in our district, 2E2. It uh, goes all the way up to Denison and down to Glen Rose, and uh, been in Christmas parades uh, in Cleburne and in uh, Denison and in Harvest Parade up in Louisville. So he's he's very popular with our Lions, and, and uh, we've, we got Simba about 2,000, and five, just right after we got Leo, and he's been a big addition to our club. He gets he gets lots of invitations. Yes, he does. Well, he's he's dressed like a, a lion. Uh, he dresses. Uh, uh, we, his picture's in the paper this week. Yeah. And I don't know uh, if you can get a, a shot of that, but that's that's Lion Simba at a school function giving out uh, gold dollars at that that particular function. And uh, usually the kids in the grade school will come up and they'll want to hug Simba. Uh, in the parade here in, in Granbury, uh, we have had students and kids bring lemonade, especially on the 4th of July, and give it for Simba. And uh, let me tell you, that's, that's really a, a, a great thing to have them talking about that and, and excited about that. Well, that costume is in the summertime. It's rather, rather warm. It's, it's not, not the best thing to try to do uh, as far as staying cool. It's, a, it, it's a hot, a hot job that they do. Yes, sir, it is. And uh, I guess the best time for Simba is it would be, for example, the General Granberry Day last year when it was so cold, <laughs> and we probably had more people in the parade than watch the parade, but. I think Simba was very happy. <laughs> so, Lion Burton, I, I'm honored to know you, and I know that when you first came into lionism, you had many lions who had been lions before who taught you much about lionism, and that same thing has happened to me, and I've learned uh, not only from you, but other lions members in our club. We have uh, members who've been in the club over 50 years, uh, like yourself, and um, ones I knew in the Dallas area that, that uh, they've been an influence on my life and part of it that, that's influenced us most is, is the serve. We serve, we serve our communities, we serve one another and no matter where we go uh, in the world, if we go and we seek out a Lions Club, we're instant brother and bonding with them and that's what happened to me when I went to Mexico. I'd never met the Lions from the club there but when I got off the plane, four of them met me like they were my long lost brothers. And that, that was, that's just a really unique feeling you, you get in the camaraderie that we have as Lions. That comes from helping. Yes. And so that's good. Well, James, uh, before, before, you, before we wrap this up, would you talk a little bit about the, the ladies and the lady lines that we have in our club? Not just our club, but what's available to, line, to, uh, to ladies in the throughout anyone that has a Lions Club? Well, <clears throat> when Lion Burton joined and when I joined the Lions Club, I joined in 1983, uh, we had a, the women that were our spouses and all, we had an auxiliary and they were called the Lioness Club, which made perfect sense. And uh, we still have a few of those in existence today. But in 1991, Lions uh, International made it so that women too could come into lionism and that's really been a help uh, some of the old guys didn't like it so they're probably not around anymore but they've really helped and uh, uh, it helps bring a lot of a lot more beauty into club meetings than just 
that's an ugly old guy over there. <laughs> but, uh, they've been a lot of help. Yes, they have. They, they work <clears throat> and they get things organized sometimes, but they, they have come and accepted our Mode of you call, yeah, you might call uh, <laughs> silliness or some yeah. things that we do that they think are, <clears throat> are goofy. Uh, because all of the Lions Club had done things, like you said, throwing paper wads. Uh, the Duncanville Noon Lions Club threw wet napkins. And they had to replace the carpet in the meeting place <laughs> they were at. And then uh, one of our recent Lions, he, he died last fall, uh, Mac Warren, Lion Mac Warren, remember some pouring a pitcher of iced tea over the guy that brought him to Lions Club one of the first times he went. <laughs> and somebody was going to pay, I don't know, ten dollars for it. He said, oh, you're going to have to get more than that. And they got two hundred dollars or more that day and he had to pour that tea over. It cost him more than that for the replace of the car. <laughs> well, it, it, he wouldn't let them do it if they were just going to pay ten dollars. He wanted them to get more money. So we do some things like that. and. And, but it's all in, in a spirit of fun, and if, and if somebody says, wait a minute, I don't want to do that, we, we don't yeah. we don't love them. Well, all of, all of the fines that you get goes to, uh, goes to help someone, and so that's, yes. you know, that's, that's what it's about. So, uh, and next Tuesday night, uh, we're not meeting next Tuesday during the day, but next Tuesday night we're meeting at the conference center, and it's the 50th birthday party for the Granbury Lions Club. And uh, our charter was signed on March the 6th, and uh, we tried to get as close to that date as we could, which uh, March the 6th on Sunday. And uh, so from 1961 to 2011, the Granbury Lions Club has been serving in Hood County and the citizens of Hood County. And we serve those who are, uh, we say, less fortunate than we are. We're fortunate to be able to be in the Lions Club, and that God has blessed us. And, and we just always try to help those who have a need in, in various different ways. Yeah. You have anything to say finally? No, I'm just proud to be a lion. Good, good. Well, we're, we're proud you're a lion too. We are. We're proud, <laughs> we're proud you're a lion. And so with that, I guess we're going to wrap this up. But we want to thank again the uh, and the U.S. Veterans uh, Museum for, for uh, videoing this for us because this is going to be something that we can, uh, we can keep and pass on down to the future lines that come on board as to some of the things that's happened that makes lines what it is today. So with that, we're going to say, gentlemen, we'll see you at the party uh, you Tuesday night. You I'm asking the governor to assist and give you your flag. like you just saw from the U.S. Veterans Museum, 
They can always use sponsors or members, and to become either a sponsor or a member, go to www.granberrytv.org.